Did you like it? Praise God. God's not dead. I'm weeping back here. Of course, I weep when I get the bill at a restaurant. But let's welcome the filmmakers, Michael Scott and Dave, <laughs> Michael and David White. Come on. I remember Michael when he was a little kid. I love you guys. You're so good. You're good. You're so good. Now, what are you going to do tomorrow? You're going to text God's Not Dead too. You're going to go out and tell your friends. You're going to get people to see the movie. You're going to change Hollywood, and you're going to change the country, and you're going to change the world. How's that? Okay, good. Well, let's ask them some questions. Do we have microphones there? Do we have anybody with questions back there? Don't leave. We need to get engaged. A couple of Christian movies have come out that were really good that didn't get an audience. We need an audience. You need to bring your friends and your loved ones to see it. Anybody have any questions for the filmmakers? Or would you guys like to say something? Question. From China, a question. I, I think the, uh, the question was, is why did we uh, decide to make, uh, bring the, the China storyline in with Martin and his father, and why did we decide to make him a pastor? Um, I just think it's timely with what's going on in China and par uh, parts of the world over there, and I just think, you know, there's a lot of persecution throughout the world. And in other films, we've used other countries, but we just felt like this was, it really fit this storyline and, and what was going on. And we ultimately, we want to see the gospel go all over the world. Um, but in this, this particular storyline deals with China, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Praise God. Any other questions? The question is, will we have a study guide and everything? Um, there will be numerous different materials for churches, Bible studies, youth groups, uh, uh, pastors, um, uh, probably whatever area or organization or different parts you're in, they will be available. Some of it will be available upon release day. Some of it will come with a kit with the DVD um, for churches and different things like that. And just keep in touch with us. Go to the God's Not Dead website, godsnotdead.com, and there's a resource tab there, and you'll be able to find out more about that as they come. Let, let me say something about that. You know, uh, I have an uncle who... Uh, was in the armed forces, and then he became one of the top people in the police department in Los Angeles, and he saw the passion of the Christ. And he had been a hardcore atheist, and afterwards he said he was looking for someone to explain the story to him, and there was nobody to do it. You're the church. you got to get out there and explain the story. You should be at every screening. You should be telling people the rest of the story. i got to say, I, I agree with, with Ted. It is... This I do too. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> do you have a microphone, Dave? Yeah, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to him in one second. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just say this one thing. You guys are the key to success for this film and other films going throughout the world and this nation. Um, we have a choice um, of content, and the question is: Is are you gonna choose content that glorifies God or content that does it? And if we stand together, we can Amen. see a difference made. We can ultimately stand up for our rights. This film is, is yes, it's about uh, Jesus Christ, but it's also standing for our rights and what we believe. And it's crucial. We need each and every one of you guys that are involved in organizations, um, your pastors, churches, whatever you are, even if you're just an individual, we need you to bring a group to, to this. And, and I want to say this. Go to our website, godsnotdead.com, and make sure that you click on there and sign up for group tickets. There's an icon there. If you sign up there, we'll have somebody contact you and make sure it's showing in your area and you guys can get group tickets. We need your help. This is not just us making a film and putting it in theater. It's up to you guys now, if you like this film, to take it everywhere. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll keep interjecting as long as I can before they kick me off the stage. Hollywood is now up to $40 million advertising budgets for each one of their movies. You know, they're releasing the new Star Wars. The new Star Wars, they've said the advertising budget is over $200 million. Ours is smaller. They, they, <laughs> these guys don't have a big advertising budget. They've got you. 
and you can do more than $200 million. Gentlemen, um, my wife is a pro-life doctor in Milwaukee, and we have lived the movie you just shot. We have had death threats, we have been sued, we have been investigated by the IRS. Can you speak up? And I just gotta tell you, it was hard to sit through it, but I'm so glad you made that movie because it was our story and I'm sure there's other people here. It was their story too. God love you. Thank you for making that movie. Thank you. to that? Oh, I said thank you, but yes, I mean, you know what, that, I mean, it's, it's what we've, what we found from the first movie is, is when, if, if you saw the first movie, at the end of it, you see about 50 cases um, that happened in, uh, uh, that were similar cases that happened in colleges all around the country, and so for us, it, it is about taking stories like, like yours, um, and and bringing them to film and bringing the light to the rest of the world and showing that our religious liberties are constantly being challenged and fought and and being fought against and so um, you guys made God's Not Dead the first one the number one independent movie of last year and you can do it again and we ask you to do it again for 16. Hi, my name is Nicolene Peck, and I'm president of the Worldwide Organization for Women, as well as founder of an organization called Teaching Self-Government. I'm also a Mormon, and I just wanted, I just want to thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I don't know if you guys know, I mean, welcome to Utah. Uh, there are a lot of people from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints here. And I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for me and my close friends. We value your work. What you're doing is wonderful. And we are here with you. We go to all of the Christian films that come, even when they're only in a few theaters. And I think it's a beautiful moment here tonight where people of multiple faiths can rally around the beauty and the truth that you're sharing. There is a woman in our church uh, named Sherry Dew, and she wrote a book. And in the book, she talked about how a friend said to her one day, Sherry, when you wake up in the morning and your feet hit the ground, Satan must say, oh, no, she's up again. And you know what? I think he says it about you guys, too. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, that's so sweet. I think that this movie is a timely message for everybody. No matter what faith you are, I think everybody needs to hear the good news of the gospel. And so I really, I really encourage you to bring your friends, your neighbors, whether they're in the church, out of the church, an atheist, whatever they are, I think everybody can see. You don't know what God can do. He can plant that small seed. Will, will they come to the Lord? I, we don't know, but that seed will be planted, I can promise you that, and that seed will, be, will grow, and eventually we're, you'll begin to see change. So I think this film can start to do that. I want to, I want to tell you a miracle, because many of you are laboring in your own areas, and it looks pretty bleak, and it just looks like almost before the jury came in that this is the end of the road for whatever you're doing. You know, when we started, after I did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on CBS television, there was only one movie with positive Christian content, Trip to Bountiful. Now it's over 60% of the movies at least have a cross or a Bible. You know, there's a Bible in Captain America, believe it or not. She swears on the Bible. There's a Bible verse on the, on the cemetery stone. And next year, you're going to get risen. You're going to get God's not dead. You're going to get Young Messiah, which you're going to see tomorrow night. You're going to get a flood of these movies. And I, you know, I gave you a charge at the beginning of this. My charge to you is get your friends and families and loved ones out there to tell the world that you can make a difference. Thank you, Ted. Um, first of all, yeah, thank you, Ted, for having us. Thank you for showing the film. I love it. We, we love you and, and uh, appreciate your you. ministry, uh, the movie guide. It's, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
uh, it's interesting when you think about the, um, we get so many emails and um, people share with us uh, their stories. Um, and, and so our hope is obviously that these films go out and impact culture and, uh, and the world. That's, the, that's the, the hope. And we've had so many, uh, some of the emails that we got and some of the tweets and all this um, after the first one, it was amazing because it went to, it, it was, it was, it, it trended on Twitter in the top 10 for 10 days. It was, it was number one for, for a couple days, and then it trended in the top 10, so it was incredible. But, but it was amazing is, is that, that a lot of times the faith films haven't reached into the youth. And what we saw was I, one of the, the things that, that struck me the most, some 14-year-old some, uh, girl had tweeted me, I guess that's the right word, and she had written about how she had cut herself. She was cutting herself. And she had gone to see that movie. And, uh, and she had felt God's love for the first time ever. And she felt like she had a, a plant, um, a foundation of which to stop the addictive behavior that had been ruining her life. And so you, you, you hear stories like that all the way up to the, to the, to the 80-year-old atheist whose wife said on a Sunday morning, or I'm sorry, it was a Sunday night, and she said, I want to go see a movie. And she said, I know he wouldn't go to this movie because he never goes to movies, and certainly not this movie. And she said, and he goes, whatever, what movie you want to see? And she said, God's not dead. And, and they, she went, and, um, and he started reading his Bible when he got home. And the amazing thing is that you hear these stories and how they impact people's lives all across the world, and not, not only in the United States, and that's why we make these movies and and that's why we want to share these movies with you and ultimately that you share them with others and you bring them and let the Holy Spirit work through them. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity. Actually, I came, I'm from Nigeria and I came to this conference, I passed through uh, Los Angeles. So the first thing I saw uh, on the street of Los Angeles in a car that I was following behind, it's, there was a bumper sticker, God is dead. God is dead. Somebody put on his bumper sticker. So I was shocked. I asked my son that was driving me, I said, is God dead in America? Why would somebody say God is dead? And then I came here and I saw God is not dead. Amen. 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 Is that how we also in Africa can benefit from this? Because whatever is given out here in America is coming back to us and people accept it like it's gospel truth. We want us to, sh to share this God is not dead in Africa. Uh, that's, uh, and we, uh, we don't know, you don't know. We also watch, we have... Uh, and we, Los Angeles. Yes. Right. No. And well, Los Angeles. In okay. Africa, they know the phrase, okay. God is good. Yeah, uh, yeah. All we the time. Know all the time. And all the time. All the time. But, okay, we have communities in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's so my line, by the way. Know. I totally Thank took you. my line. <laughs> I took my line. Here, I'll, let me do it again with you. <coughs> I can do you. it better. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God, God is, is good. good. Thank you. Let me say this, you know, it, it, she, she brings up an interesting point. You see all these bumper stickers and everything. Um, uh, you know, God is dead, or we're trying to remove God from everything. We're based on a Christian nation but we can quickly forget that if we don't stand up and talk about God and that he is alive. And we do need to change that, that narrative that God is not dead, he surely is alive. And, that, and, and this film and your voices, not just for this film, but as you're in the workplace and everywhere, stand up for God, take a stand. Um, and when you take a stand, God does incredible things. I did not see the first movie, and I know others that haven't, so I was hoping you guys would have a double feature, and that's all I want to say. 
We, we might. Maybe opening night of the movie, we'll do a double feature. We'll have to see. Get the DVD of the first movie. It's, it's worth its, its weight in gold. Available everywhere. Yeah. Listen, this, this is a very um, lean and, you know, down to the bone operation. I remember when they started, David tells the story that they went to an island and they got stuck on an island and the boat left them and the police and they were, you didn't have any food, right? You were making a movie, you didn't have any food. Tell me the story. Come on, tell me the story. It is so great. And these are guys who are starting with, this isn't a big Hollywood studio. These are people who are committed to their craft. Just tell a little bit of it. All right, I don't Come even on. know why, but It's okay. funny, it's funny. <laughs> All right, so we shot a movie in Mexico. Uh, when, when we, uh, there was a guy, hey! <laughs> there was a guy, uh, one of our partners, uh, our, par our other partner came to us and he said, hey, Dave, I got a guy and his name is Larry Large and he owns a boat. And not just a boat, it's a 120 foot yacht in Mexico. And we got to make a movie about something on that yacht. And we all thought, well, yeah, because we'd like to go to Mexico and hang out and shoot a movie. <laughs> and uh, we prayed, yes, we prayed a lot, actually. And, and it's called In the Blink of an Eye, by the way. It's a great movie. Um, but we shot a movie down there, and, and the, uh, they dropped us off on an island. Um, we were shooting on an island, and then, then we got a call that, that Larry Large hadn't paid his taxes <laughs> on the yacht. So the yacht was gonna, had to go back to the port, or the Mexican Navy was going to seize the yacht. <laughs> so... We thought, well, hey, we'll shoot on the, we'll shoot on this island, and uh, we'll keep going because I think what, I saw the movie. That's right. what low-budget movie makers do. Uh, you keep shooting no matter what. <laughs> and, the, and, and Russ, our partner, went back to the uh, to the port to deal with the Mexican Navy. And as the sun is setting, uh, uh, we're running. We don't really have any food, and there's nothing on the island either. Um, and we were out of our burritos that we were eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, um, and the sun was setting, and, uh, and there's one person on the crew who kept saying, uh, and so we were like, well, what are we supposed to do? Because we're literally in the middle of Mexico, nowhere, and, uh, and cell phones don't work, and, and, and we had no, play, no way to contact Russ, and we we're hoping that he knew where we were, and that the boat could get out of the Mexican Navy, and and uh, stockade or whatever they, they put boats in. Um, and we say, hey, let's pray. Let's pray. Because that's really the only thing you can do, right? When you're up against the wall, what do you do? You say, you pray. Because all of a sudden, God does exist. <laughs> and so this one person was our script supervisor. And she was a very mad woman. Uh, but she, she started freaking out. And she's like, listen. She was Hollywood. She was Hollywood. That is right. exactly right. And she started freaking out. And she's like, there's nobody coming for us. God's not going to show up. Russell's not going to show up. You know, we're stranded on this island, and what are we going to do? We're going to starve to death. She started getting going dramatic because that's what Hollywood people do. <coughs> and, uh, and so we prayed, though. And all of a sudden, uh, up on a hillside, it was maybe 11 o'clock at night. We'd been out there. You know, that's not a good place, by the way, to keep your actors on a stranded on an island. You can only tell them so many stories about, oh, no, of course, somebody's coming back to get us. And, and uh, all of a sudden, our, other, our partner came, and he was surrounded by four of these, like, massive, um, I don't know, forerunners uh, with those huge tires, because everybody has huge tires in Mexico. And, uh, and he stepped out, and these lights come up on, a, on this hillside, and sure enough, it was Russell coming and somehow he found us and uh, and he saved the day and and that's what and you uh, made many more movies and we went on to actually not that was not our last movie we made other movies what why so did go i to want him to tell Pureflix. you that story dot com. if you go to pureflix.com right now which is our 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 svod platform similar to netflix but all faith and family films you will see in the blink of an eye and then you can pick that island out okay I told that story because there's somebody sitting in the second row who's making, no, he's not here now, but Alexi, 
Alexei was saying, well, I can't make a feature film. I don't have enough money. You all have enough to do something great if you have a story. We made it for 100 grand. That's too much. <laughs> Alex Kendrick made That's his first... That's what I told David when he was making it. <laughs> Alex Kendrick made his first film for 12000 Exactly. And it was a great film. This so, oh, okay. You're working your way up. But this is David versus Goliath. This is David. Hollywood is Goliath. We are David. We're the people who have the stories. If civilization that forgets how to tell its story dies, don't forget how to tell your stories. You've got to tell great stories. These men are telling great stories. Go on. Yes, thank you. Um, I love to see that a movie like this would be out. And I, I feel like our culture here in America, even just hearing uh, the lady from Nigeria say that she got here and she's like, is God dead? <laughs> and yeah, like I feel like the culture in America is kind of turning towards that. What I'm wondering for you, having the ability to make movies and spread the culture of media, what are your goals towards making an even bigger presence in Hollywood? Um, a lot of the movies now are single parents, uh, father left me, and I find that even as a traditional marriage, I feel a little left out. <laughs> I, I gotta, How do you I gotta address say one, this? I gotta say one thing first. What we do is show Hollywood how to make money. And we go look at it and you know we have all this verbiage, semantics and tactics and stuff, but the bottom line is that we've shown them that pro-life films make more money than anti-life movies. So there are more pro-life movies. It started with Juno. There are, right now, opening this last weekend was Home. It's a pro-life movie. There is no pro-abortion movie opening up. We've shown them that if you put characters that have perverse sex, it doesn't make money. So there are no perverse characters in the top 15 movies out there. So I don't know what you're thinking, but we're seeing a seismic shift and we're gonna continue that shift because I got grandchildren, we're gonna just make it much better. Now you can answer. It's true, I, I mean, we've seen, and for Pure Flix, our goal is, is to make a broad spectrum of movies. Um, from God's Not Dead, we've, we've made over 40 movies, uh, we've distributed over 100, um, and we wanna attack all forms of media, both in the theaters and in television. Uh, like David said, we have the SVOD platform, Christian Netflix, PureFlix.com, but we wanna hit it from everywhere because people consume TV, they consume movies, we want to have something for everybody. Hello. Uh, congratulations on your movie, on the acting also. I'm from Quebec, Canada, and uh, in Quebec, as probably perhaps here, I don't know, but in Quebec, teachers in public schools are not allowed to say uh, that they believe that Jesus is God. At the same time, uh, they are teaching a class called Ethics and Religious Culture, which presents religions basically as folklore. So there were 2,000 uh, parents in Quebec who protested this and it went to the Supreme Court and they lost. I'm just hoping this movie comes to Quebec, which is mostly French, but at least you know, people do go see English movies, and uh, that it gives hope to the parents in Quebec that they can still fight, continue fighting for the parents' rights in the school. Thank you so much. Thank you. It'll definitely be there, and we want to support Canada as well. Hello. Um, so, thank you for just creating such a beautiful movie and doing it for the glory of God. And um, that being said, I just like. I think the acting was amazing, and I think that the, w the way the film was made, it was very, very well done. Um, and I was just kind of curious, like, how did you make relationships with everybody that you made the film with? And, like, um, was that just, like, an, an incredible experience, getting to share your faith with other actors and people already in Hollywood? Yeah, you know, I mean, the casting is an interesting process, obviously. Um, uh, we always pray about, Lord, who do you want in this movie? And, and then we get to see what he does in the process. And, and you know, through the process, it's, it's uh, as in your lives, it's not exactly easy. You know, um, it, it's always ironic to send our script to an agent 
and the Hollywood agent looks at it, you know, uh, or they'll be reading it or a star's reading it, and then we hear that they uh, were v deeply offended by it and they throw it into the trash can and, you know, and then they, they write back, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, God is dead. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, you know, <laughs> um, but... Uh, I'll talk to them. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell them to talk to, talk to Ted. Um, but it's interesting because it, we watch God show up on set. You know, we, we believe there's a lot of um, companies... Uh, Christian companies, and, and they all have different styles. Some only cr cast uh, believers um, in front of the camera and behind the camera. But for us, we feel like it's a mission field on both, you know, in front and behind the camera. And so we try to pray before, uh, we do pray before every, every day. We have Bible studies during the day. We, um, a lot of times, the actors have never even, uh, you know, we have all kinds of stories from people yeah, Bosworth is amazing. That, that, that was an interesting one. Um, well, yeah. Anyway, long that's a long short, story. Uh, huh. People that, are, that, have, that have worked on our films have come to the Lord, and Brian Bosworth did a film for us, and God radically got a hold of him and changed his life, and now he's out on the road preaching the gospel everywhere. Yeah, it's amazing. That is, a, okay, well, real quick. So Brian Bosworth says, hey, he calls us up after he makes a movie called Revelation Road, and if you haven't seen it, it's amazing. It's a good movie. We gave it a good review. Um, and, uh, and he goes, hey, I want to see this movie. Uh, or I, I, I want to take this movie out to uh, casinos and theaters. Um, is that okay? And we thought, wow, he's going to take our Christian movie out to casinos. Uh, and he goes, yeah, because I know a bunch of chiefs. We thought, okay. You know, there's not a lot of Christian movies playing in casinos. So, uh, so, we put the, so we allow him to go out, and on the third night, he gets up there, and he, said, and he, he asked me, he goes, what, what should I say after, after the movie's done? You know, because there's like a salvation message and everything, and, I, and I'm, not a, I'm not a believer. In fact, he was filled with a lot of anger and everything. And, uh, and I said, well, I'll speak from the heart. And so the third night, he gets up in, 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 a, in the Hard Rock Casino, and, uh, and he says, there's, a, there's actually a rapture scene. And he goes, um, do you know if you were to die tonight, where you would go? And, and, and he asks the audience. And then he actually had, he was authentic enough to say, because I don't. And a, a pastor in the audience ended up coming and, and leading him to the Lord. And then from there, he became an evangelist practically. Yeah. And uh, you could see, like, he is, he's, it's amazing what the Spirit of God has, has touched his life. So you never know. That's the thing is, like, if you're out there and you're making movies and, and in whatever you do, when God shows up, it's an incredible thing. And, and we've been able to see that in our, in our films in front and behind the camera. Yeah, I, I should tell you that we get people coming to Christ in just more numbers. It's a small industry. There are only six major studios. There are only 33 people who control the studios. There are only a couple hundred actors that act all the time out of the 100,000. And we just see people coming to Christ. And, you know, I'd like to say that it's because of them or because of me, but it's not. It's because God is moving in Hollywood. You know, I think this is very funny. And this is my, I'll try not to say any more. In 1812, we've got two minutes, a Supreme Court justice said the country had become so secular and so pagan, it would never be Christian again. Do you all know that? 1812, right before the burning of Washington and, and the war. Well, what happened? Revival broke out. Where did it break out? In Wall Street. Nobody expected revival in Wall Street. You don't expect revival in Hollywood, but it's happening right now, and you should praise God for it because it's going to change your life. One more question, then we got to go. Revival in Hollywood, that's what we want. Just a short comment. I am a young adult pastor. My name is David from Latvia. This is far away in Europe, and I don't know how and if you even feel the impact you have in Europe, but it's huge, and you have touched many people's lives in my country. That's a very, very small country. A lot of Christians have been encouraged to, to step up with the previous movie. And this one is just something awesome. So I'm very excited to see it in Latvia. And we hope that we'll get it into our movie theaters. Thank you very much. It's a blessing. God bless you, sir. One of the, thank you so much. One of the coolest things I, we ever saw, though, was the, a London double-decker bus. And on it said, God's not dead. Let's congratulate our filmmakers. Thank you. One minute and 36 seconds. Well, God bless. One more live statement. I, wanted, I also want to say we have one other <laughs> cast member in the audience tonight, Gianna Simone. If you yeah. can stand up and wave. She played the young attorney with uh, next to Ray Wise on the. Uh, on what the a other wonderful side. attorney! God I bless think she's you over there. Great job, and um, like I said, 
in the last minute, I just want to say this. Please help us out. Godsnotdead.com. Go there. Get information about There's a little icon there where you can click for group tickets. Sign up. We'll get someone to get in touch with you. And we'll make sure this movie gets into your theater wherever you're at if you sign up and get, and, and get some group tickets going. Thank now, you so much. They fly back tonight. But I want you all to say to each other tomorrow morning, God's not, not dead. dead. Two. Two.